for this video, we're gonna be discussing the properties of limits. Let's have the first one. The limit of C as X approaches A is equal to C, where C is a constant. And we should remember that the limit of a constant is the constant itself. Let's have examples. For letter A, the limit of 2 as x approaches 3 is equal to 2. For letter B, the limit of 3 as x approaches negative 1 half is equal to 3. And for letter C, the limit of pi as x approaches 0 is still equal to pi. So as you can see in these examples, the limit of the constant 2, 3, and pi is the constant itself. Let's have the second property. The limit of x as x approaches a is equal to a. Let's have examples. The limit of x as x approaches 5 is equal to 5. The limit of x as x approaches negative 2 is negative 2. The limit of x as x approaches 2 thirds is 2 thirds. Let's have the third one. The limit of the quantity nx plus c as x approaches a is an plus c. So we're going to be substituting the value of x or where x is approaching to to our function. Let's have examples. The limit of the quantity 2x minus 1 as x approaches 4. The first thing that we need to do is to substitute the value where x is approaching to what number that is approaching to 4. So we have 2 times 4 minus 1. Then simplify. 8 minus 1 and our answer is 7. For our example letter B, the limit of 2 minus 7x as x approaches negative 1. We have 2 minus 7 times negative 1. Then simplify. 2 plus 7 is equal to 9. For our fourth property, the limit of x raised to n as x approaches a is equal to a raised to n, provided that a raised to n exists. Example number 1, the limit of x squared as x raised to 4. Just substitute where x is approaching to, we have 4 squared, and that is 16. For our example letter b, the limit of 4x cubed as x approaches negative 1. Just substitute, we have 4 times negative 1 raised to 3. Then simplify, we have 4 times negative 1 8. Then if we're going to multiply, we're going to have negative 1 half. For our fifth property, we have the limit of nth root of x as x approaches a. This is equal to the nth root of a. Let's have examples. For letter A, the limit of square root of x as x approaches a. This is equivalent to square root of 8. Then if we're going to simplify this, we're going to have 2 square root of 2. For letter B, the limit of the square root of the quantity x squared plus 2 as x approaches 1. Just substitute for x is approaching 2. We have square root of the quantity 1 squared plus 2 then simplify, we have square root of 3. For letter C, we're going to find the limit of the cube root of the square root of x plus 2 as x approaches 4. Just substitute the value where x is approaching to. So by substitution, we have the cube root of the square root of 4 plus 2. Then simplify, square root of 4 is equal to 2. Then we have the cube root of 4 as our limit. Let's have the sixth property. Let f of x and g of x be any two functions such that the limit of the function f of x as x approaches a and the limit of the function g of x as x approaches a exist. Then we have the limit of the sum of the function f of x and g of x as x approaches a is equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches a plus the limit of g of x as x approaches a. Let's have examples. The limit of 2x cubed minus x squared plus 5 as x approaches 2. The first thing that we need to do is just 
distribute the limits to each term. We have the limit of 2x cubed as x approaches 2 minus the limit of x squared as x approaches 2 and the limit of 5 as x approaches 2. As you can see, we just distributed the limits in each term of our function. Then we're going to simplify each function. Finding its limit, the limit of the first term, 2 times 2 cubed minus 2 squared. Then the limit of a constant is the constant itself, which is 5 as our third term. Then just simplify. The limit is 17. Then for our example, letter B, the limit of the square root of the quantity 4x squared plus 8 minus 5x cubed as x approaches 1 half. Then just substitute where x is approaching 2. We have in the square root symbol, we have 4 times 1 half squared plus 8. Then our second term is 5 times 1 half cubed. Then simplify, we have 1 half squared is equal to 1 fourth. Then 1 half cubed is equal to 1 eighth. And here, 4 times 1 fourth is equal to 1. Plus 8 is equal to 9. And the square root of 9 is 3. Then 5 times 1 eighth is 5 over 8. Then simplify again. Our final answer or our limit is 19 over 8. Let's have our seventh property. The limit of f of x times g of x as x approaches a is equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches a multiplied by the limit of g of x as x approaches a. Let's have our example for this property. For letter a, we have the limit of 2x plus 3 times 2x plus 1 as x approaches 3. Then let's distribute the limit in each function. This is f of x. This is g of x. So we're going to have the limit of the quantity 2x plus 3 as x approaches 3 multiplied by the limit of the quantity x squared plus 1 as x approaches 3. Then by applying the concept of limit, we have 2 times 3 plus 3 as our f of x. Then we have 3 squared plus 1 as our g of x. Then simplify, we have 9 times 10. And our limit to this problem is 90. For our 8 property, the limit of f of x over g of x as x approaches a is equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches a over the limit of g of x as x approaches a. Provided that the limit of g of x as x approaches a is not equal to 0 because if we're going to have 0 in our denominator, it will make our given undefined. Let's have our example. The limit of x squared minus 2x plus 1 all over x squared plus 1 as x approaches 2. Then we will have the limit of x squared minus 2x plus 1 as x approaches 2 all over the limit of x squared plus 1 as x approaches 2. Then substitute. We have 2 squared minus 2 times 2 plus 1 all over 2 squared plus 1. Simplify, we have 1 fifth as our limit. Now let's talk about the limit of a quotient. Evaluate the limit of the following. Number 1, the limit of the quantity x minus 2 squared minus 4 all over x as x approaches 0. Number 2, the limit of x squared minus 5x plus 6 all over x minus 3 as x approaches 3. Number 3. The limit of the square root of x minus 2 all over x minus 4 as x approaches 4. Number 4. The limit of 1 over x plus 2 minus 1 half all over x as x approaches 0. Number 5. The limit of 1 over x as x approaches 0. And number 6, the limit of x squared minus 1 all over the quantity x plus 1 squared as x approaches negative 1. If you're going to look at these examples, and if direct substitution is applied to all of these, the answers are indeterminate or undefined. In that case, how are we going to find the limit of each problem? 
let's have our problem number one. The limit of the quantity x minus 2 squared minus 4 all over x as x approaches 0. In this part, we cannot do the direct substitution because this will be undefined. So we're going to think for another way on how we are going to find the limit of this problem. And that is by simplifying first the numerator. If we're going to simplify the numerator, we're going to expand this part. We have x squared minus 4x plus 4. That's by using the FOIL method. Then minus 4 all over x. Then simplify. x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus 4 all over x. So in this part, we can subtract 4 and 4. And this will become 0. Now we have x squared minus 4x in our numerator and x in our denominator. Then we can factor our numerator by finding the GCF, which is x. So we have x times the quantity x minus 4 in our numerator. And our denominator is x. Then cancel x. Now we have x minus 4. Then by substitution, we have 0 minus 4 because x is approaching to 0. 0 minus 4 is equal to negative 4. And this is the limit of our number 1. This is not undefined. For our number 2, the limit of x squared minus 5x plus 6 all over x minus 3. So if you're going to do the direct substitution here, we have 3 minus 3 in our denominator and it will make this problem undefined. So we're going to think for another way on how we're going to find the limit of this problem. And that is by factoring. So factor first the numerator and cancel. So by finding the factors of our numerator, we have quantity x minus 3 and quantity x minus 2. So these two binomials are the factors of our numerator. And as you can see, we can cancel x minus 3 in the numerator and in the denominator. And the remaining part is x minus 2. Then by substitution, we have 3 minus 2 is equal to 1. And 1 is the limit of our problem. Now let's answer the third problem. The limit of the square root of x minus 2 all over x minus 4 as x approaches 4. So ganun din, if we're going to substitute it directly, 4 minus 4 in the denominator is 0. And that is undefined. So what do you think is the other way on how we're going to find the limit of this problem? So in the first problem, what we did is we simplify. In the second problem, we factor. Here in our third problem, we're going to rationalize the numerator. So in doing so, we're going to multiply both numerator and denominator by square root of x plus 2 all over square root of x plus 2. And this is equal to 1, which will not affect the value of our problem. Then what we need is to simplify. So by using FOIL method in our numerator, we're going to have x minus 4. And in the denominator, we have the quantity x minus 4 times the quantity square root of x plus 2. And as you can see, we have the same x minus 4 in the numerator and in the denominator, and we can cancel them. So the remaining part here is 1 over square root of x plus 2. Then by substitution, we're going to have 1 over square root of 4 plus 2, and this will become 1 over 2 plus 2. And our limit is 1 fourth. Let's answer our fourth problem. The limit of 1 over x plus 2 minus 1 half all over x as x approaches 0. So if we're going to do it directly, we're going to substitute it directly, 0 will be in the denominator and it will make this problem undefined. So how are we going to find the limit in other way? We can combine the rational expressions. By finding the LCD, we're going to multiply numerator and denominator by the LCD of our numerator. So the LCD is the quantity x plus 2 times 2. We're going to multiply this in our numerator and also in the denominator. Then by multiplying, in the numerator we will have 2 minus the quantity x plus 2. 
And in the denominator, we have x times quantity x plus 2 times 2. Then simplify. We have 2 minus x minus 2 in our numerator. And in our denominator, we have 2x times the quantity x plus 2. So we just multiplied 2 and x. Then we can cancel this because 2 minus 2 is equal to 0. So we have negative x in our numerator. And in our denominator, we just distributed 2x to all of the terms in our x plus 2. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 2 is 4x. So what we need to do in this part is to simplify. Because if we're going to, to do the direct substitution, we have 0 plus 0, that's still 0. So we're going to find the GCF in our denominator, which is x. So we're going to have negative x in our numerator. And in our denominator, we have x times the quantity 2x plus 4. Then we can cancel x in our numerator and x in our denominator. And now we have negative 1 in our numerator over 2 times 0. Because this is 2x, if we're going to substitute where x is approaching 2, that is 0. So we have 2 times 0 plus 4. And this is 0 na. So our answer or our limit is negative 1 fourth. Now let's answer our fifth problem. The limit of 1 over x as x approaches 0. So we cannot have here the direct substitution. Because if we do, we have 0 in our denominator. Also, we cannot factor and cancel because there's nothing to factor and cancel here. Also, we cannot rationalize. And we cannot combine the rational expressions because we don't have rational expressions in this problem. In our numerator, that is just 1. And in our denominator, that is just x. So our answer here is not undefined because we are finding the limit. So simply the limit of this problem or the limit of 1 over x as x approaches 0 does not exist or D and E. And now let's have our sixth problem. The limit of x squared minus 1 all over the quantity x plus 1 squared as x approaches negative 1. Also in this problem, we cannot do the direct substitution. Because if we do, we have negative 1 plus 1, that is 0. And that will be undefined. Now let's try factor and cancel because we can factor the numerator. In doing so, we have x plus 1 and x minus 1 as the factors of our x squared minus 1. And we can cancel x plus 1 in the numerator and 1x plus 1 in the denominator. So the remaining here is x minus 1 in our numerator and x plus 1 in our denominator. Then if we're going to do the direct substitution now, we have negative 1 plus 1 in our denominator which is equal to 0. And we cannot have 0 in our denominator. So we cannot use the factor and cancel in this problem. Also, we cannot rationalize this because there is nothing to rationalize in this problem. Same goes with combining the rational expressions. And from here, we can conclude that the limit of x squared minus 1 all over quantity x plus 1 is squared as x approaches negative 1 does not exist. And this is the end of this video. If you learned something from here, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. God bless us all.